Hello, Nintendo Chit Chatters. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome to episode one of Happy Birthdays coming to the Nintendo Switch on June 5th. Shoutouts to NAS America for providing me a copy of the game. It's time to start building our world. Stay tuned. <laughs> Here we are, guys. Welcome to Happy Birthdays, booting up right now. Make sure you blast the like button for the preview episode. Comment below and subscribe if you're new. This game was called Birthdays the Beginning on other consoles, but now it is Happy Birthdays on the Switch. You are in charge of your own world, creating it and shaping it. New two worlds are alike, and you want to give birth to life forms of all kinds. So it's sort of, sort of like Populous back in the day, where you kind of are raising and lowering terrain, but you're not fighting, um, you're arming against another army. You're fighting against evolution, in a sense, here. <laughs> Pretty cool opening here. Yeah, your basic mission here, um, at least the first mission that I know of, is to get your life forms to evolve until we get a modern society of people, apparently, so that's pretty cool. But there's tigers, there's cave people, there's dinosaurs there. Awesome. The cool thing about the Switch version as well is you can choose uh, what biome or what uh, cube you begin with. So there's four of them to choose from, and you can do it right off the bat, which is super cool. So again, big shout outs to NAS America, guys. Releases on June 5th, so get your pre-orders in. Let me know what biome or what cube you will begin to start out with in your game. Uh, should be pretty exciting. I'm going to choose the Greenlands. So we have new game, load, challenge, free mode, or options. What are the options here really quick? Background, okay. Window size, interesting. Cool. The nice thing about the Switch is you can play, of course, in TV mode, portable handheld mode, so this game is great to take anywhere, anytime, and play it. Here we go, so the four options we have. Green Plains. I've been waiting with, uh, many ages for your arrival. Let's start by selecting a stage for you. They each have their own merits, so pick one that suits your best. So Green Plains, this cube has expansive, lush greenlands, so it would be a good place to start. Scorched Earth has a scorching hot land with little water or green to offer. Might be a bit tougher for a beginner. Frozen World is a frozen fragment of a planet. This cube is an expanse of fresh, new rocky plains. So, green plains it is. I'm gonna select the stage. Nice choice. I'll see you later then. So, who's talking to us here? One day. A day like any other day, I was reading a book when an old scrap of paper fell out. It looked like a small map, specifically a map of this area, and in the forest, a spot had been marked. Maybe it's a treasure map. A childish notion, I know. I had no way of knowing if the map was real or not, but it didn't seem too far away, so away I went. Pockets of sunlight seep through the dense canopy of trees. Dimly shining my way as I walk through the dark forest. Right when I thought, I think this is the spot. Oh, old car in the woods there. A beam of light appeared before me. At that moment, I wanted to run. But my feet wouldn't budge. So there I stood, and then as if beckoning me, the light began to move. And my feet responded in kind. I felt like a puppet. There was nothing I could do. I eventually arrived at the entrance to a cave. The light continued into the cave, and my feet continued after it. Shortly after, I lost consciousness. Hmm. Cool. When I woke up, there was a giant cube before me. Next to it, a smaller cube-like object and a creature I had never seen before. And with that, the strangest incident of my life had begun. So if you've played Populous, you know that you're kind of raising and lowering land. So same kind of idea here, but there's a lot more to it as far as 
Um, when you do this, it changes air temperature, um, sea temperature, all kinds of little um, things will be tweaked and changed depending on what you do to the world, and that will decide what kind of life forms and how they evolve. So it's Navi. Hey there, we meet again. I am Navi. I'll always be here by your side. That fellow to your left there is your avatar. Can you tell me your name before we get started? We sure can. So this um, opening tutorial here with the controls it has a lot of text to it, so I won't read all of the text. But I'll read part of it. And just be patient with the tutorial here, guys. There's a lot of controls to learn in a game like this, so keep that in mind. For a long time, my job has been to give birth to life on worlds such as this one. But lately, things haven't gone right. I know everything about this world, but I can't do anything on my own. First things first, you need to know the rules here. Let's start there. Say, do you know the controls already? Explain. So we have our cube. It's the amazing box where we can watch life evolve. Sure, let's look inside. So the land looks sort of like Populous as well, um, as far as like the uh, 3D effect here. The whole environment of the planet has been recreated right here. It's teeming with vegetation. You can see butterflies and dinosaurs. So they have a mission. Okay. Lots of organisms. There is quite a bit, yeah. So we're a cursor, okay. Red square, that is the cursor. Yes, right in the middle of the map, it's blinking. It can highlight various things. It's always a focal point whenever you use your powers, such as raising and lowering terrain. And use it to move as well. So the L stick moves you around. And you can do the ZL button to move quickly. And R stick is the camera. If you hold the L button while moving, you can zoom in and out. Okay, cool. Now there's a mini map too. A small map up in the top right is the mini map. It shows a bird's eye view of the entire cube map. The red marker re represents your location. I've got that. Also shows the distribution of life and the conditions of the land. As you can see here, we have water temperature, air temperature. I wish this was Fahrenheit. Though. I'm not sure if you can change it or not, but that's okay. The pointy end of the red marker shows which way you're facing. So don't forget zero degrees Celsius is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So keep that in mind if you're uh, in North America or the US. Oh, we have an idea of what these Celsius temperatures are. Try moving around. Head over to the place highlighted in the red on minimap. Okay, so where is that at? Upper left, okay. So where does, how do you zoom? Okay, got you. The left shoulder button and then the right trigger. The right stick here, actually. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go over here. There we go. All right, you've gotten the hang of it. Edit the terrain. This is your most important ability. You're probably wondering why. It's key to being. Uh, it's key to uh, bringing life into the world. Press the R button, and the selected area will rise. Cool. And the ZR button lowers the area that's selected. So you can create valleys and holes in the ground. You can make mountains. And of course, if you make a big mountain, the temperature will be higher, or I should say lower. To put things simply, raising the land will decrease the temperature, and lowering the land will increase it. So there you go. The changes in temperature uh, will cause uh, will be displayed on the minimap. Be aware the temperature changes are affected by more than just terrain ele uh, elevation. You can shape the environment. New life will be born that is suited to each of your environments. When a life form thrives, its population increases. They give birth to new types of life. 
So repeating this cycle will give uh, birth to all sorts of life forms. That's cool. Let's try raising and lowering the terrain. Okay. Then you can hold it down too. That's cool. So you can just click it or you can hold it down. So it costs HP to raise and lower terrain to use the powers. The more you work, the more you drain yourself. Makes sense? Ten times, okay. There we go. You can heal lost HP by returning to macro mode. But I'll heal you now, it's a special treat. So I think macro mode is when you're kind of like looking at the entire cube or the world at, at once um, from afar. So there are special skills too. But you can't just use them whenever you want. You need stars in order to use special skills. They are crystallized forms of the power of the planet itself. Who knows if that's really the case though. You'll get stars from editing the terrain and from logging organisms in your library. The more stars you pick up, the more star power you'll gain. You can use special skills by using up your stars. So there's a valley source skill. It's used to dig out a big hole in the ground. That's cool. All right, after receiving stars, press the Y button to open up the skill window. Then you use the L button and the directional buttons to select the skill. Okay, then push Y to use it. And then B button uh, when you're finished, okay. Sounds pretty good. So I go over here to the star. All right, we got it. And now let's go to our skill selection. So there's other ones here that are not highlighted. There's the river source, uh, mountain source, field source right now. There's valley source that we can select. Push Y. So once it's to use it actually, okay, right. Over to here, right? Yeah, right in this red area. So we'll use it now. There we go. Boom! And look at that. Some of the trees fell in um, into the water that we created. What do you think? Useful. Some of these skills recover HP. Others change terrain. Give them a shot later. Each skill requires a certain number of stars, so be sure to gather them up when you can. Cool. That's pretty good. Okay. That's neat. Hit the X button now. So we're watching over the world from a far away distance here. So you actually zoom out from here too, which is cool to zoom in, which is, that's really neat actually. You can also um, unfreeze time. As time passes, the cube's environment will change with each passing moment. Once certain conditions are met in the cube's environment, uh, life will be born onto the world. Let's set time moving and see what happens. Unfreeze by pressing the R button. Go ahead and give it a try. All right, I'm going to hit R. I'm zooming in a little bit. So there we go. Things are changing. Time is flying by. So over on the right, we have life news. Is that a snake or something? Pretty cool. You can spot new life forms here whenever they are born by the new mark here. Make sure you don't miss a single life form's birthday. So cube status. So we have air temperature here, um, plant life, animal, land, and water temperature too. Also percentages which mean like how much land to water ratio, that kind of thing. Yeah, how do you create life? Temperature is a key factor. Generational and geogra geographical changes matter too, but the most important thing of all is temperature. The ratio of sea to land determines your environment's temperature. The more land you have, the lower the temperature. And the more sea you have, the higher the temperature. Elevation is also a factor. We know that.
mentioned before how you can start the flow of time, but now let me tell you something even more useful. Take a look at the bottom of the screen. You can select how fast you want time to pass. The R button will stop and start time. The ZR button will let you switch between fast forwarding and stopping time. That's cool, we can fast forward. But when you start time, you'll recover HP, but when you fast forward, you'll lose HP. Okay. Starting it, and now fast forwarding it. That's pretty nice. So look at the life news, now we got a bunch of new things there. Some new life forms, some plants, and um, animals. Ever heard of evolution? Well, you see, sometimes the environment can no longer support certain species when there gets to be too many of them. When this happens, species start to adapt to their environment and through evolution, new species are born. Go on extinct, oh wow. Life sure is mysterious, isn't it? Very cool. They have a mission for us, right? There it is. So what is our mission going to be? What sort of life forms exactly? Well, the key idea is to give birth to humans, just like you. I want you to bring modern humans to life and let their civilization prosper. Let's try it. Now then, the rest I will leave up to you to do whatever you want. Just press the plus button for the controls. And press the R stick. Okay, we can do that. And that brings Navi up to us. Cool. Good luck. Third degree Celsius moisture. All right. Cool. So hitting X brings that to here. To this little area. Okay, that's cool. Macro mode. All right, and jumping back. Okay, cool. All right, let's go over here. There's a start on there, actually, isn't there? Yeah, I got it. We're actually underwater, that's crazy. Alright, when the blue uh, normal marker turns pink, that means you can capture something. Alright, so we can press the A button here. It's super important, okay. It earns you uh, experience and stars. So with stars, you can use your special skills. All right. By earning experience, your avatar will level up and grow. As you capture life forms, you will earn experience. And when you get enough experience, you'll level up. And you'll gain more HP. You can change the cursor size, too. Left and right directional buttons. That's cool. Oh, wow. Okay, I got you. That's really cool. So we'll capture this. It is a blessed tree. Olive trees. Fertility is A. So the tree actually has some stats to it. That's pretty cool. Birth temp. The water temperature in the sea changes a little slower than the regular temperature. Okay, yeah, that's important to know. The sea is a birthplace to life itself. You see that the elevation is in the negatives. Everything in the negatives is part of the sea. That's how the world works. The higher the temperature rises when the sea gets bigger. That makes sense. Okay. 
I'm just testing things out here. Get rid of uh, this little area here. Zoom in a little bit here. All right. Whoa, look at these guys. Alligator. Oh, he just ate something. What did he eat? I don't know. Let's, um... Build this up here. Say so one degree Celsius we lost. Let me, uh, make this smaller again. I'm gonna put a little, um... Like a lake or something in here. Alright, there we go. So you can be creative. No two worlds are alike, so just kind of be creative, take your time, and just have fun with it, right? Gonna kind of even that out, actually. There we go. And get rid of that. Cool. This is a little piece of water. Some dinosaurs there of some sort. We get a lot of water here. Notice how the ground around your river is turning green. As land around a river starts to soak, over time it starts to turn green. So both rivers and seas it happens. Gotcha. Kind of want to fill this in a little bit more. This we use this valley source thing here, and I want to kind of take it back to the green land that it was before. <laughs> uh, so we'll kind of fix this up here a little bit, at least the part of it, right? Not the whole thing, maybe, but uh, let's see. Actually, I can have that. Let's see. Have it flow over to here, I guess. It's gonna seep into there now, isn't it? Very slowly, it will. There we go. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it gets a little bit used to the controls here. It takes a little while. The thing about making your cursor bigger is cool too, but if you want to fine tune things. Oops. There we go. Let's go like this. Alright, good. That's interesting. Well, let's see. Make the cursor bigger here. Like that. Whoa, that's really big. Boom. We 
We can attach this land mass over to here. I was going down instead of up. Go figure. Um, see how he's getting, getting green there? Well, that's pretty cool how that gets green because of the water over time. That's really neat. We can actually build up like a little bit, like a mountaintop maybe. Like a ridge of some sort. So being very creative here. I <laughs> get rid of the top there on that one. There's fish I see now, too, which is really cool. There we go. Let's go to the back side of this thing here. Turn the camera. There we go. Cool. Now I can see the back side. It makes it easier. Interesting. I'm going to zoom out here. Alright, let's go back out to the other mode. So we build a little bit here. It's going to take a while. You're building things from scratch, basically. Making and shaping your world however you want. Start time. So we're getting some HP back. We're going to fast forward now, too. All right, so there we go. Got a bunch of new things here. And some growth. Air temperature is 31.5 degrees Celsius. So land, 56.2%, uh, 43.8. Go back to micro mode here. That's very cool. All right, guys. I think we're going to take our break here and end our first episode. We can go in here and see all kinds of stats as well. Uh, we're going to save our game. New data. Very cool. And there we are. So this game seems like a pretty chill, relaxed game to play. Uh, so you're basically creating your own world, which is really amazing. Make sure you guys blast the like button for us. Comment below and subscribe. I'm Eddie Ray from NintendoChitChat.com. We'll see you guys back here next time.